This is, without a doubt, the most important video I have made to date on this channel. So thank you very much for watching this, and thank you for tuning in. You may recognise this man. His name is Nick Moon. He's currently assembling an old organ in a chapel at an old convent here in France. What you may not know is that he and his family have dedicated the last 15 years to rescuing and caring for animals of all sizes. Nick, along with the rest of the family, have kindly offered for me to come down for the weekend to see what it's like to run their charity that cares for elite sport horses called Legacy of Legends. It was, of course, an offer I couldn't refuse, so join me on this adventure as we meet all sorts of creatures, some big, some small, some fluffy, and some eccentric. Little did I know, however, the journey down to the Moon household would take a turn for the worse. Mummy Moon has saved two turkeys from ending up on people's dinner tables. They're going to be running around uh, the place that is all creatures great and small. So, um, Are they yeah. your pets? I think they're going to be pets, yeah. So um, it's one of those, uh, didn't really see that one coming to be honest. If someone had said, what were you going to be getting this week? I wouldn't have said two turkeys, but say la vie as they say in France. <laughs> Um, would you mind giving me a call back please because Canfo is not very well and I need to get hold of you. Thank you. We just had a phone call from home. Um, Jenny rang Mama Moon um, and we've got a bit of a drama going on. One of the horses, Canfo Z, who is the legend that is Canfo Z, unfortunately he's got colic which is the horse equivalent of a belly ache or um, you know, bad stomach or bad guts as well. Um, the thing is horses can't be sick so it's a bit of a worry because unfortunately what happens is there is a, a chance that their intestine can, can twist um, a bit like if you twist a sausage and then nothing can pass through and that's what happens the muscle gets very very tight and it, it actually tries to contort itself and turn over so Mummy Moon just rang and said he's got colic so he's obviously showing signs that his belly's a bit um rough and all that um and the 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 one of the things to do is just to keep them walking and hope that that solution about and everything makes it better for them so fingers crossed that it passes literally um and when he goes to the toilet that's a really good good key that things are heading in the right direction um if it doesn't it's going to be a, a very long night when we get home but yeah just fingers crossed because um, it's a horrible thing that horses get and uh, yeah it's it's a bit nerve-wracking so we're we're making our way um, obviously making our way back as best we can and we'll we'll have to deal with what whatever we get when we get there what happens if it doesn't pass Nick so if it doesn't pass there's two two options um, and then neither of them are very good um, the first option is that we opt for or you would opt um, for surgery um, and that would mean a long um, journey to one of the clinics. Uh, I think our nearest one is Bordeaux, which is a good three and a half, four hours. Um, so the vet would come, sedate them, try and make, make him as comfortable as possible. Then he'd be on a lorry for three and a half or four hours. The other one, unfortunately, is the worst case scenario that um, he ends up being put to sleep because um, it's inoperable so that the twist is and that would only be really from um a, under veterinary advice that he would um do various tests and they actually uh, can can pretty much tell how severe it is so if it's um yeah if it's doable to operate that's that's one thing if it's not then unfortunately it's the other but what we must do is always do the right thing for for the animal uh, for him uh, the animal uh, because um you know it's a hard decision but um it's you know the least suffering possible but hopefully fingers crossed all we always try and look on the on the positive side that 
um, we'll get back and he'll be happy. He'll have, he'll have had a poo and uh, um, the bad time will have literally passed. So yeah, it's a bit tentative. Are you stressed? I'm not stressed. It's something I live with and that's a really interesting question. Um, I think it's always been, especially when you have animals, uh, uh, you know, people use an expression, you have live you have livestock and you have dead stock unfortunately i don't look at it like that i look at it as we try and do the very best we can but i do know in the back of my mind that one day it's not if it's when when we're going to need a vet or we're going to need to to make a decision with the horses but that is part of our day-to-day -day life that is what we do that's who we are and you, i'm not saying you ever get used to it but you just know that it's a it's a potential that 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 will happen quite how exciting poos are in the moon household but yeah i think we're out of the woods so all's good he's deflated now can't wait to see you both bye yeah he's cool yeah, boy. he's passed oh. on he's done it he got through it came out the other side well done boys say that when i see him will you thank you thank you for looking after him that's oh. wicked yeah that's good. Good. Good boy. Oh, yep. a relief. Good. So yes, how differently it could all have ended. Colic is like the worst thing because he just goes, it can be, oh, it's nothing, they've got a bit of a belly ache, or like they're going to die. It's really, really it's bad. Similar. Yeah. So, and also, what happens, like I said, when it gets, um, when the gut twists, um, it stops the circulation going down the gut, and they actually, it's it, it it's, it's real. It's like a quite a real quick infect. Um, it's like having an infection because the gut stops moving, and then the wheels literally fall off. But he's looking like it's all right. Yeah, I think he's out of the woods. Let's meet the moons. Nick, Jenny, baby Oscar, Toby, Charlie and Rupert. Together they are showing me their property of over 50 acres and we'll meet some horses along the way. This is Beauty RJ. She was my um, horse back in England. She cost me one pound because uh, she was going to the big stable in the sky. She was dangerous, unrideable, uh, untrainable, whatever you want to call it. And she turned out to be one of my best competition horses. Um, she went on to, to jump up uh, nationally at a very high level um, and she was fantastic. So uh, yeah, the, the, the story, is, it's great that, um, yes, yeah, there's always a, um, a silver lining and she had a really really yeah great career with me and I was just really um, lucky she she came round. We've got Belle and Bear up here. Bear unfortunately he was a, a rescue case from the UK and um, he's blind in both eyes and uh, the little horse well the bigger horse next to him Belle we actually bred her I'm um, back in the UK and uh, she's like his guide dog so she shows him about and looks after him so they're the best of friends those two. He was kept in a barn back in the UK for, as a, from a foal and uh, when they let him out um, the sun was too bright and it damaged his eyes so he can see a bit but he's not not great he's got the, his eyes are quite misty um, but we've had him for cool we must have had him 10 years now he's one of our youngest rescues bear but you know um, Belle's been amazing looking after him, isn't she? Hey, hello you.
May I proudly introduce the reason, really for life as it is now, which is the mighty Epeland de Fouquet. He was once uh, the champion of the world at the high jump, so he, he used to jump the big red wall. He's fundamentally responsible for propelling many top riders to where they were, because he wasn't just ridden by one person, uh, but mainly he, he now, uh, or was formerly ridden by the world's number one. So um, you can just see what a legend can do for someone's career and for their life. And what we did was, <clears throat> we stumbled across him completely inadvertently through the equestrian centre that I ran with my mum and stepdad back in the UK and with Jenny. Uh, we stumbled across him and his story, it went from there. We found him <clears throat> um, through no, no fault of his own or anyone else's really, just circumstance. Um, he ended up um, <clears throat> losing his way. Um, and anyway, we got him home and we didn't realize what we had until so we opened his passport and we went on the internet and boom, that was it. The whole, our whole lives changed forever because we suddenly thought how could uh, a, you know, a warrior like him end up uh, where, you know, in the position that he was in. Um, and we, that was really that raised the question, what can we do about it? So therein lies the start of Legacy of Legends, which is to protect these <clears throat> beautiful animals that have given their, their lives to the industry, have made people uh, more money than most people could ever dream of having in a lifetime and changed lives and careers. And uh, we think that it's important that the world should see it as a, a necessity, that there's something put in place to protect them uh, in their latter years or when they're not able, because it's sometimes it might not even be the fact that um, they're old, it might be through injury, or, but there should be protection. So our dream, our goal is that we create a law and we put legislation in place that means that this will never happen again. We've got many examples and we're very fortunate to have these beautiful legends cross our path. Um, and in this day and age, with all the, the media that, that there is, the platforms, it's not, it's not gonna be hard to keep them in the public eye. We can't have all the legends in the world, but what we can do is get people to change their mindset, get the younger people so that they appreciate the necessity for this, but with that legislation in place, it will be taken care of. Um, so that's our goal and that's what we're gonna do. This goal of changing the legislation had piqued my interest. So I asked Nick to kindly explain what is the issue now and what would the new legislation in place do to solve that problem? When the passport comes through, you only now need to just write the new name and address of the owner and sign it, that's it. What we're saying is, there will be an obligation to go onto a platform to log the new details and that will then be part of the database. If there is any change in that horse's status, the database will be updated. If you want to know where Magic is or any of the horses, you just go on there and it pings up. It's easy peasy, but it just needs doing. You may have noticed that beautiful white horse behind Nick there. So let's meet the horse Magic as well as another horse, Ginger, who was destined for the meat trade before being rescued. Okay, so I'm here with another legend called Magic, who uh, comes from, where is it? Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan, one of the rarest breeds in the world, an Alkateki, and when he's not got his uh, winter ruffs on, when he's not got his winter coat, he glistens like gold. It's unbelievable. He, he goes as soft as silk, and it's, it's beautiful. Anyway, the story behind him was he, uh, he, he ended up crossing our path, and um, as with, we live on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, we family and all the animals and everything, and it is literally hand to horse mouth uh, as it goes. And a good example of that is I'm away working, and uh, Jenny gives me a call saying, there's a problem, you, you know, uh, something's gone down, it's Magic's eye, he's damaged it, and the result of that is, he no, he no longer has one, and that was purely because he had something wrong with it, and then he's caught it, or banged it, or something, and the eye had to be removed, which was terrible, but he's happy, he's living a great life, he's loving life, 
but that was massive financial implications for us. So on top of everything else we're doing and trying to keep, uh, you know, afloat, uh, we then have, and that is kind of what we do. We're at the end of life care with a lot of them. It's kind of, it's like the old people's home, uh, and we love it. But every day, it's not if, it's when. You know, it's not if the vet's got to come, it's when will he come. And that is that is the pressure we live with, that's what we do. We choose to do that because we're trying to do the, do the right thing for these great animals. So this is Ginger, she is I think about 26, 27 years old and I think maybe this time last year it was, I'd have to look it up but um, yeah Nick went to the Italian border to pick Ginger up because unfortunately she, we, she was going to slaughter into the meat trade and um, after all her years of service obviously that isn't, isn't right, that's what, exactly why we, we've created Legacy of Legends for, for cases like Ginger and uh, yeah so Nick drove a long old way didn't he and got we hired a horse box and went and picked her up and she's been here ever since. It took her a little while to settle in. She was really worried because she's a professional horse. So she, you know, she's used to a certain lifestyle. So obviously heading for the slaughterhouse wasn't something she was ready for really. Um, so yeah, it took her a little while and a little while to trust. But now she's like just everyone's best friend. She's the kindest horse in the world. She's actually one of the only horses that's ridden still because she quite enjoys it. So Charlie rides her out, doesn't he? Hello Nick. Hey Ryan, welcome to the feed room. Obviously this is all the uh, the food for the horses. Yeah, the individual bags, so all the horses like us like different things, but they also need different things at that stage in their life. You know, they all have their individual requirements. How many horses have you got? We've got um, eight in, um, and we've got another eight in the field, so I think it's 16 in total. Um... Apart of, uh, we didn't include the little mini me's, a couple of little ones. <laughs> Which you've seen, the little fluffy ones, yeah? You remember yeah, them? I remember. Like Ping and Pong. Yeah. Is that their name? No. All oh, right, okay. It's Kimmy and Totty. Okay, yeah. Tot yeah, yeah. Sounds a bit better. Yeah. How much are you spending per week on food? It, uh, at the moment, this time of year, it's it's getting around the 180, 200 euros a week. So it's it's a hefty chunk, you know, it's like a, it, it's a big one. Wow. Yeah, no, it's it's surprising. It, as I say, it all adds up because they because it's all individually. Yes, they um, all the horses have a certain ingredient, but then it's supplemented with whatever they want, and then they have their supplements on top. So as they're getting older, they require just that. You know, maybe it's for joint supplement, maybe it's for uh, you know a different herb or something which is just going to help them. You know, so every one of them, Jenny's absolutely brilliant at the horse husbandry she just knows well you know kind of get those years of experience she just knows what they need and and just she's on it but at the moment we're just trying to do everything we can so i've we've got a really nice tractor and the local farmer i've gifted it to him uh, for harvest and he's now still using it for cultivating so all the time he's got that he's very kindly given us um the hay and the straw so that's great until that arrangement ends um it's not it's not a permanent thing it was just kind of a get out of jail what we had to do at the time so uh, we've got that and it's it is a big pressure um but they need it and at this time we do the hot bran mashes so they get um what they need in these colder uh, you know in the winter months um, and that obviously eases off when they go back out to pasture they're back out and the grass starts coming through so this is a critical time of year it's a hard time of year for everyone um, but uh, it yes we feel it um, and uh, we don't want the horses to where'd you get the money from I go to work 
Jenny, Jenny, um, Jenny makes uh, bears, and um, and I go to work, um, and with the support of you guys uh, on the YouTube from the channel, we get um, uh, a bit from that. We've got some very kind people who are patrons, um, and they donate as well. So every little helps. We just, you know, it just makes a difference. That's the thing. It, you know, people think, oh, it, f five euros here, to, it all adds up, but it does. What it does is it goes straight to the horses and it makes the world a difference. And in essence, we wouldn't, uh, as a family, change it for the world. What these horses, we're just so privileged, so privileged to be able to be in the presence of these legends and for all they've given to the sport, what they've done for all these people, it's just an honour to be able to support them in their latter years and we are just lucky enough to be those people. So yes, it's hard. Yes, as we say, it is um, day to day, you know, hand to mouth, whatever you want to call it, but it doesn't matter. What matters is them and that is why we do what we do. Horses aren't the only animals that the Moon family have rescued, so let's meet a couple of furry friends. However, I must warn you, they haven't had the best of luck before meeting the Moons. This is their story. <laughs> What's this one's name? Pom Pom. We went in some stables up the road. The first day we drive down there, there's this bungalow. The, 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 well, there was just, you couldn't even see the bungalow. And we could see this dog running backwards and forwards. And Jenny said, what's, what's going on with that? So when we got down to the yard, she said, oh, what's the deal with the dog? Oh, the old lady's died. Yeah, but what about the dog? That was four years before. So he's been roaming about. It's all like a jungle. The front door's open on the bungalow and the main, the, the gate shut. And bless him, he's just been there and people have been throwing him a bit of food and a bit of water. So anyway, the rest is history. We get hold of we get hold of the ex um, owner, the lady, the old lady that died, the daughter, and say, look, that isn't on. You cannot just leave your dog like that. And we get the paperwork and get signed over. And then Charlie befriends him, catches him, and then walks him back on the lead, which is about probably two and a half, three miles, isn't it? Um, and then brings him home. And then, so now he's gone from being in the, in a very confined, very lonely existence, probably wondering what the hell's going on because the, the old lady's unfortunately no longer here, the only friend in the world he had, to the mental moons. Chick, 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 chick again, lay a little leg for me. Oh, oh can't, I'm a boy. <laughs> please, please. Oh, oh. Holly came to us, we got her in the UK, she was actually rescued by the RSPCA um, and unfortunately she was eight weeks old and the chap that um, had had her did some absolutely terrible things to her. Um, she's a she's a Rottweiler cross so she's a little bit special anyway, you know, like in the breed, just how the breed are, but he, um, yeah, he, he, he did some really nasty things. He, he broke her, her back, her legs, her tail. Um, he kicked her in the face and she lost most of her tongue. She's got barely any teeth. Um, and then he set fire to her and then he buried her alive. So she's she's a little bit special, bless her. She needs lots of care and attention. But um, yeah, the, we'd done a bit of work with the RSPCA through the horses and they knew that we'd be a good home. And they'd all had, they all had like a really, when they found her and um, a sniffer dog found her, the policeman in the, the sniffer dog found her and she um, wagged her tail. And bearing in mind everything she'd been through, sort of everyone there had all got emotionally attached to her and couldn't bear the thought of like putting her down. She was so small and really with the injury, she probably, you know, could have been very, you know, could have been put down. But um, yeah, spoke to us and yeah, we, we took her on and it's been, yeah, she's been absolutely fine. You know, she loves us. She loves Nick and I and the kids and stuff. But, you know, it's our priority to, to look after her and manage her. And, you know, we can't have anyone anyone that doesn't know her touch her not because she's nasty she's just worried she's really really scared so but she's a lovely girl she's quite old now she's got to be about 10 haven't you hey yeah she's a bit of a crazy thing but but much loved member of the moon family
Were the goats and sheep rescued as well? That's a very good question. Were the goats and sheep rescued? Um, yes and no. It was one of those Jennies, uh, oh, there's this sheep that needs a home. It's going to go to slaughter or something like that. Um, one of those ran another day in the office. And um, so, yeah, we have two sheep. I, I think the first one was uh, privately owned going to the slaughter. And the other one was either roaming free or something i'm not quite sure but uh anyway so we ended up and the goat well that's a brilliant one because it was supposed to be a miniature goat and now as you can see uh i think it's daphne or daisy daphne the big one is like half the size of a horse um and the other one again was um, a bit of a random i think she was um roaming free so yeah uh not really sure but we've got them Thank you so much for having me this weekend. You've got a beautiful house and a beautiful family. Well, thanks for coming. Yeah, no, thank you. And thank you from the horses because you yeah. know, you're their voice. You're helping them. Yeah. You, you have just, you, you just started the, the snowball rolling. I do hope so. But what does the future hold for the Moon family? So although we have a, we're lucky enough to have this beautiful house and everything that goes with it, the land, the views, the beautiful magical forests and the river and everything we embrace as a family, which it has been, you know, for seven years, we've just been so privileged to have it. What we've realized is, and as it's evolved, because that's what's happened, we've been here that we need somewhere more suitable for the horses, but more importantly, a platform that we can then push the horses, really drive it forward. And we can be credible. As beautiful as it is, mm. it was a sheep farm, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, and so we've 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 muddled along, uh, literally muddled, muddled along, a uh, bit, of, bit of stuff. But we need uh, a facility just to give the horses more because they deserve it. They need, and, and, and at this time of their lives as well, they need... Yeah. I mean, we can make it here. We could do that. We, you know, but I think for us... We need a more professional environment for the horses. Now, we came from a professional environment in England, didn't we? And we are yeah. sort of struggling now a bit. So, you know, we do we do need somewhere that's um, more suited to the horses, you know. Yeah, it's been, this. you know, we said that like the Darling Buds of Moon or it's been a bit ramshackle, it's been a bit rural France, which is lovely. And the horses get what they... Well, they, they, they live in the best life, they aren't are, they? Like, they I know, mean, my... Kids running around. Yeah, and, and the horses, the herd, they've backs. got like 21 hectares to roam about in and do what they want. The, these guys, free range when they come it's absolutely ideal we, we're privileged it's quiet it's you know it's isolated but accessible to Limoges to the hospital when when young Rupert was really sick when he was born um, 20 minutes you're in Limoges but when you come here you could be anywhere uh, it's just beautiful it's completely um, off the scale but for what with the stage we're at and we've got to now difficult decision wasn't it it is. Uh, it still is. It still is. And when we walked around there with you yesterday, it, it makes you, you know, kind of, well, no, no, we'll, we'll just stick. But we can't. We need to... Yeah, it does. Win. I was like, because it went on it went on the market, um, well, it was on the market a bit last year, wasn't it? But then yeah. we had Oscar and then we put it back on again uh, September, yeah. maybe. And there are so many times where I go, oh, I can't do it. <laughs> no. But, but, but then you look, at, then you come back and your reality you do the horses and i think no we've got to do it because it's for them yeah. it's for them and they, and they need this and we need to get to the net there is another bit our future doesn't stop here no. and we need to push forward to get to that propel. point propel ourselves propel. for the horses for, for the, the horses. horses of course yeah no i mean that's that's it we you know it's yes okay we're sacrificing we're, in a, we're right. in a foreign country for the horses we've done it all for the horses <laughs> yeah <laughs> everything we've done right down to the country we live in has all been really off the back of epilan an epilan yeah. story isn't it yeah and you know and, and obviously the beginning part of you know getting all the youtube thing and sadie coming out and doing the video she was amazing and helping us set it up and you know starting to push things forward and then obviously you know Billy and Gwendolyn and everyone there now on board Michael and, and, and Ryan and now I mean, Ryan that, out the, here as well I mean it's everything, just you know, we always say everything happens for a reason and believe in magic and be kind Jenny Mummy Moon saying is be kind because that's where it's at and that goes a long way and uh, yeah we're just really grateful that all our you know all the um, all, all the things that have happened have happened and we're where we are now so we're looking forward to a, to a yeah a pretty bright future so it'd be good yeah
So the weekend has been and gone. And I've been reflecting on my trip down to the moons and it has changed my perspective on life and showed me what is important. And I can see that Nick, Jenny and their boys are doing a truly magnificent job making a difference in this world to many animals. So I want to help in whichever way I can. I don't have much, but I have this platform and I'd like to kindly ask you for help as well. I'm going to be leaving a link in the description for Nick and Jenny's YouTube channel called The Moons. Please go and show them some love. Go and subscribe, watch a few videos. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. Uh, Jenny is a true cinematographer in the making. What's more, there is of course a financial need to care for these animals. And so I will also be linking Nick and Jenny's Patreon. It's also called The Moons. The link is in the description. If you can spare any money at all uh, to support them on a monthly basis, they have um, plans starting at just five euros per month. They would be incredibly grateful and all of the money goes to the charity Legacy of Legends, which is Nick and Jenny's charity caring for those elite sport horses. And of course you are helping the rest of the moons by donating, you're, you're helping the rest of the animals of course, but you're just lightening the load if you decide to subscribe to their Patreon. So if you do that, thank you so much. But of course, uh, every little help. So just going over and watching their videos is a huge help. So thank you, thank you very much. I do want to give a special thank you as well, of course, to Sadie Petherick, who has been helping Jenny along the way this whole year, and uh, Billy Petherick, of course, as well, who's been helping uh, recently to give equipment uh, for uh, Jenny to improve the quality of the videos. And I would, more importantly, like to thank the patrons that they already have over on the Moon's Patreon. Now, is our chance to make a difference and to help these animals that need love and care. So thank you so much for watching this video and I really appreciate anyone who decides uh, to sign up to the Patreon. It means the world to obviously Nick and Jenny, but it also means the world to me because I like to think of myself now as the unofficial spokesperson for legacy of legends. <laughs> I've just crowned myself that. That's why it's unofficial, okay? So thank you so much for everything. It's much appreciated. And we will be visiting the moons again and getting an update. And hopefully by then, we've managed to make a difference, you and I, together. See you soon.